Welcome to Inspired Edinburgh. Powerful conversations helping you reconnect with your purpose. I'm Elliot Reeves and my guest today is David C. Riley. David is an adventurer, a traveller and a disability sports and travel writer. You were born with cerebral palsy but have never let your disability prevent you from participating in outdoor pursuits, achieving your goals or fulfilling your potential. Your work has been published in newspapers, magazines and online journals and you've also made appearances on national television and radio. You now aim to inspire and motivate others through your writing and speaking. David, it's a genuine honour to have you here. Welcome to the show. Oh, thanks for having me. You're Thank absolutely you. welcome. You're absolutely welcome. It's been great um, spending time with you. Um, we've had a, a catch up prior to this and it's been really fascinating finding out a bit more about you. So it would be great if you could tell us a bit about you know, your, your background um, growing up and, and a bit more about you know, the, the work that you do. Uh, I uh, grew up about 20 miles uh, from here in Harrington. It was, uh, it was a very small town uh, place at the time. It was a lovely place to, to grow up. Uh, I went to the local school there uh, up until the age of 12 and then, then after that I went to school in Edinburgh and uh, uh, what, what was I, while I was growing up in, in Harrington I suppose I got my first taste of the outdoor life there uh, you know and, and I was a member of the, the scouts and the cubs and uh, 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 unfortunately, uh, Harrington is surrounded by really beautiful countryside and I saw a lot of myself, myself out with my family, either walking or fishing or something. So, uh, uh, so I didn't ask for my passion for that door when it started. I can't, uh, I can't remember a time in my life where I wasn't interested in the outdoors or motivated to be outside. It's really? something that I've always, I've always had and I always will yeah. have, you know. That's so, amazing. And so that's where I grew up. Uh -huh. uh, so I, went to, I started school there. I went to school my latter way in Edinburgh. And so, so, uh, I think I had quite a, I, think I had a quite difficult childhood mm -hmm. in some ways, you know. I had a really great family and great home life, but I had a lot of frustrations, a lot of, uh, uh, I, I, I wasn't able to do as much as I am now, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm sure I, uh, I find that. I find that frustrating and uh, as a child it's a lot more difficult to yeah. accept than yeah. where I'm not. Definitely. So, uh, so that's for my childhood. Yeah, uh, very interesting. So when you came to school um, in Edinburgh, what was, what was sort of education like for you? How did that work? Well, the truth is, you know, I had what, what I described as a pretty checkered education. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I think that's the best way to describe it, you know. Uh -huh. I was in mainstream school in Harrington mm -hmm. until I was about 12 years old. And, and then I think I was being bullied at school or I was, uh, I was, I was, uh, I was running away, I was unhappy, and at the time it fe felt like a better idea for, for me to go to, uh, for me to go to special school in Edinburgh. And, and, and so, so I went to a school called Grays Mill School, and things were fine for a while there, mm -hmm. but I started, uh, having more, a bit more difficulty there and uh, took out a very long story and it is a really grisly long story, mm -hmm. <laughs> short. 
I, I think I discovered I was dyslexic when I was 14. Okay. Because I was unable to read uh, or, or write appropriately uh -huh. for, for my age. And at that time, I had been, uh, I had been written off, you know, you know, before my adult life had kind of began, you know, my, my, my parents had had a letter saying that I, that I would never sit a public exam and really? uh, there was a day centre at Trinity that I could probably attend. And uh, it's a very long, uh, great, you know, ugly story. <laughs> mm -hmm. But to cut it a bit shorter, I, I eventually left school at the age of 16 and I had nothing with, with no qualifications. I, I, I pretty much left school the day that I could and uh, never looked back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. What did you do when you left school? Uh, well, as I said to me earlier, I answered a few problems at school. Uh, with the education department here. And so my parents had been made aware of an FE college in Coventry in the Midlands, specifically for disabled students. It was called Harrow College. So we went then to see it mm -hmm. and uh, and uh, I had an interview there, I spent some time there, I had a trial there, and uh, they, they, they had a look at the sort of help that I needed to learn, the remedial teaching that I would require. Mm -hmm. And the first thing they wrote back and said, oh, look, we're sorry, we don't think that this is the place for David. But, but only a short time later, uh, I think it was a week, I think it was weeks or days. Or they got in touch with my parents again, and they said, "We'd like to offer David a place here." So I was literally uh, sent to Coventry, oh, as they say, <laughs> and 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 uh, and I spent the like four four years there, and I got loads and loads of media teaching. Mm -hmm. And by the time I left, I had a couple of A-levels and, uh, and entry to university. So it, yeah. was, it was really worthwhile. Definitely. So it was great. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, what was it like moving away from Edinburgh? Uh, it was quite difficult at first, uh, you know, but there was good times and bad. It was, it was a bit like a, it was a nice community there. and. Uh, but I always enjoyed coming home on holiday. Yeah. You know, I think Edinburgh is a pretty special place. Yeah. And, uh, I think the good bit about living somewhere else is it makes you really appreciate Edinburgh. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so I'm glad I did it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it, obviously, I mean, you know, we've we've spoken and I've I've looked at your your education as well on on your website. Um, you went on you you got a degree and you did a master's in molecular biology and it seems strange that having gone through the education system that said that you would potentially not get qualifications that you were able to attain that level of qualification so like how is that possible <laughs> well you know and so, and, and so as you know I asked myself the question how is that possible and why was I so written off yeah. at that age? Uh -huh. uh, and and you know, I don't know, I don't know how clever answer. Uh, you know, uh, uh, you know um, I think things for disabled people are improving without a doubt. Really, but you know, I come across patterns of disabled children at the moment mm -hmm. and they and and sometimes but not always the battling with the education uh the parents to get the correct teaching and help and and exactly the same way my parents did 
30 uh -huh. years ago. Yeah. So in some ways things are getting better, but, but there's still there's still a way to go. Mm -hmm. I I don't know how they're gonna set. Yeah. What what kind of improvements? So long. Yeah. What kind of improvements would you like to see? Uh, well, I think it's great that children are are more integrated into mainstream school. You know, mm -hmm. I you know I can't think it's strange now that I went to special school at all. Yeah. And uh, you know, and I like to think nowadays I might have stayed in mainstream and got the support that I needed. Mm -hmm. So I think anything to I think the th things that keep children together in the same school in the same uh, if that's appropriate yeah. it's not it's it's not always appropriate and that's fine you know, you know that there there will always be a place for special school for some yeah. types of disability. Uh -huh. But the, where possible, integration is great. How do you wish, or how do you hope that people would approach you in everyday life? What, what, for example, are some of the maybe discriminations that you've faced? Um, the I think the biggest discrimination I face in my life in the employment form. Really? Uh, yeah, because you know I worked very hard to to get my degree, and my education, and it was no, it was it was no mistake that I did molecular biology because I loved it. Mm -hmm. uh, it was it was where it was where my passion was. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, absolutely. And I spent and I spent years and years telling at work in that area. Uh, as a research technician, research technician or uh, uh, in need to go on to a PhD. Mm -hmm. you? And as, t as time went on, I've been after that longer and longer and it became hard to get back into it. And I suspect, and I don't know for sure, I suspect that I suffered a lot of discrimination uh, in that area. Yeah. Uh, so, so I would like, to, so in some ways, that, um, so I think it's important to treat people as equal. Yeah. But it doesn't always happen. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For people that don't know um, much about your your condition, what is cerebral palsy? Well, you know, cerebral palsy. Is not a helpful sort of term to okay. for everybody, you know, um, because people with cerebral palsy can range from people like me to people with profound physical and learning um, impairment. So I suppose the term cerebral palsy just it, it covers so much. Okay, yeah, that's know. interesting. I mean, yeah, I wouldn't have thought that. And uh, and so it's 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 very individual to you. For 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 myself, uh, it affects obviously my verbal communication, my balance, my coordination. Mm -hmm. But but uh, I would say it affects everything a little, which which is which is pretty fortunate because I can get around, I can function, I can I can. Have a great time, I can do my yeah. sports uh, and stuff, but it's not helpful in the sense that, you, that, that somebody who's quite profoundly disabled has, you know, you, you, you know, so they, they have cerebral poverty. So it's, it's not helpful, really. Really? No. It is what it is. Yeah. Yeah. That's really, it's really interesting <laughs> to hear that. Yeah, really yeah, interesting. It is what it is. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I watched an interview. It was a, um, a London Real interview with RJ Mitty. I don't know if you're familiar with the program that was on called Breaking Bad. Um, right. But he's, a, he's an American actor 
and he has cerebral palsy. It's mm. relatively mild, um, but they were speaking about that, and he said that he doesn't, you know, he's never sort of seen himself as different because it's all he's ever known. Mm. You know, it's just that's how he is. That's his yeah. reality. Yeah. I mean, would you? Is that the same as what you would say? Um. I think it pretty much is. You know, I, 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 I certainly don't. Uh, I, I certainly don't know any different. And and life is, and and life is what it is. And I'm David, and I'm David with my cerebral palsy, and and so that's entirely my reality. Uh -huh. And and no, it's uh, and uh, I do it different. So. Uh -huh. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, it's good. Most of the time. It's <laughs> <laughs> good. It's really cute. So what what um, would you say to educate <laughs> others about disability as a whole? Hmm. <laughs> uh, you know, I I I hope that just by being. Uh, out there in the world and doing what I'm doing, uh -huh. uh, my sports, my writing, yeah, you know, I hope that says, uh, I think that says everything. It certainly says more than I could, you know, articulate, you know. <laughs> I have the same motivations and drives and desires as, 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 as anybody. So, I hope that this being and doing whatever I'm doing just says enough to educate people. What else? You know, what else do they need to know? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, does that make sense? Yeah, 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 it does definitely, of course. Um, yeah, that's a, that's a good answer. I like that. <laughs> what has been your. Um, you, you, you just kind of touched upon the. Um, discrimination that you might have faced around um, employers a bit. What has been your career journey to date? Uh, again, I would say rather checkered. <laughs> and then, and then, you know, it's a theme there with my education. <laughs> uh, well, when I finished my master's degree, I was really keen to stay in the field of molecular science and research. I, I was down in Manchester working in a lab on, on, on cancer research. Wow. And I was really keen to stay in that field. And I was in contact with a prof down at the Western General here in Edinburgh. I was keen to be back up in Edinburgh. And so I came up and that job, for whatever reason, didn't materialise. And so that was about 1997. And I've, n I've not worked in science since then. And so, uh, and since then I have jobs, but, but, but never a job of mine is kind of choosing or in the field. That I'm interested in. I've had, I've had all sorts of undesirable jobs, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and I'll be the first to admit that when I get them, I'm not very good at keeping them. <laughs> 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 so uh, yeah, so again, I but but I've been quite lucky in some ways. I've, I've worked quite a lot in mental health, mm -hmm. and I've worked for the church. And I'm putting it in factory, so I've done various things. So, but I'm much happier, I'm much more content now, do my own thing and just sort of carve out a path or a niche yeah. uh, for, for myself. Uh -huh. it, you know, it, it's much healthier for me. Yeah, 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 definitely. Uh, I'm sure it's healthier for a lot of other people as well. <laughs> yeah. Um, you, you've done some fairly incredible things. You know, I read that um, during your time studying, you'd climbed over 30 Munros. Mm. Um, you've had a trial for the British Paralympic cycling team. You do paracycling races. You know, what what is it about the 
the, the outdoors and the adventures that you really enjoy? I think I enjoy the, the, the physical and the mental challenge, but I mm. like, okay, I've always had a habit of really pushing myself to, to see just how far I can go. Okay. You know, and they say, what, what, what I can do, where my limit is. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and sometimes I, I've pushed too hard and, and learned, but, but other times, you know, I, I've, I've done something and thought, wow, you know, that's amazing. I can do this, you know. Uh -huh. And I suppose my, my desire has always to, just to be like everybody else, you know. I, I was at university, I was in a hillwalking club, and you know, a lot of my friends were climbing minerals in these days, and and I just wanted to do the same. That was as simple as that, and I would not be told otherwise that I couldn't do it. And I, I suspect that has been the same with a lot of the things I've done. Um, uh, Cycling's been a big part, um, a big part of my life. And I've done a lot of cycle racing, or or a bit of cycle racing, um, and again, all of my friends were doing a bit of racing. I just wanted to compete on the same level with them, and uh, so, and I, 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 th I think it's just something inside me that wants to push and push and achieve and just to see how far I get. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> and I can't describe it otherwise. And I think, again, I don't know anything else. Yeah, you know, yeah. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> it's, just, it's just something that I do. Uh-huh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> You've written a few articles about what it's like to um, undertake challenges and adventures as somebody with disability. Um, what are some of the, the sort of obstacles that you need to, to deal with? Uh, I think people need to kind of understand that it's a lot more difficult, you know. Mm -hmm. I've, I've come across a lot of people who, who who would say if you just try harder, if you just if you just train a bit more? Mm. And, and I think the, I think the two things I'm saying. I think the one thing to be really aware of is a st a stamina levels. Okay. Uh, for, for example, people would often uh, go out and they'd plan a big walking trip with maybe five or seven peaks in a day. Which is quite normal for for able-bodied people, mm -hmm. but for, but for me, I I'd have to say, well, you know, I couldn't do that much. What can I do instead? Mm -hmm. uh, and and it's the same as the cycling. I've had to say, well, you know, I can't keep up with able-bodied people. However, I can do this, and to rearrange things, and and. And the way that it suits me and suits them, so yeah. So yeah, I think that's some of the challenges. Uh huh. Yeah, and I I suffer. I I I I go through a lot of pain, when when I'm walking and cycling. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's the most uh, the most difficult. <laughs> but yeah, uh, uh, I think for example. I think about a month ago, I was up north doing a walk with somebody, and I was just in X. Oh, terrible pain coming down the mountain, and I and I said to myself, as I do regularly, I'm not doing this anymore. Yeah, you know, I'm not prepared to tolerate this. Really? And so because it just doesn't get incredibly painful, and. But for, but for me, it's about trying to manage that pain and manage my energy levels. And uh, but but within a few days, I was like, I was looking at maps, thinking, I'm working a good. Really? <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I just, I can't. 
I can't help it. Can't stop. Can't, I? can't stop, uh, won't stop. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Not possible. Yeah. Uh, w- uh, what have you learned about yourself doing these these challenges? Uh, the, I think the best thing I've learned is that I've got a lot more stamina and than I thought I had. Mm-hmm. And for some reason, I thought I wasn't able, or I was weaker, or I was, or, or I wasn't as tough. But I would completely end up saying, you know, when I think of the out of the the out of Hebrides, it took me five days, and it was, and I had to dig deep. Sometimes, you know, uh, uh, towards the end of that time, I was getting really tired, really so I was really grumpy, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> but but and I think towards the end, of it, I was really surprised at how much, uh, how much fuel they've got in the tank that I didn't know I had, uh-huh. and and so and so. And so that inspires me, and it motivates me on to do more. Uh-huh. And, to, and, and and to plan more. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So, so what are some of the the challenges and adventures that you've done over the last few years, and what are your your plans to do others? Uh, uh, well. Uh, I've I've done a couple of big cycle adventures. Uh, the 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 Outer Hebrides being one. Yeah. And, and I think my plans to try and do a lot more outdoor stuff uh, uh, in the hills. The, I think uh, I think years ago I thought that the the hill walking was something that I might not be able to do, and I can inject it in. But in the last year or so, I've really got back into it again. I thought, you know, I can, you know, you know, I can do this. And the passion and the enthusiasm that I had for it 20 years ago all came back. <laughs> and, and it's great. And I'm really enjoying that. And so my, so, so my sort of plans for them were, is to keep up my cycling and the cycle is expeditioned. But also I'd um, try to get back into the hills and uh, maybe a few more roads. There's two, there's what, 287 <laughs> or whatever, you know, <laughs> and, 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 you know. I might never do them all, but it would be great fun. Uh, it would be great fun trying. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> really good fun trying. <laughs> and so, uh, yeah, so that's, uh, that's a few more plans for. Yeah. For and to, to do a bit more traveling. Yes. Uh, I would love to travel, so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll get on to traveling, definitely. I want to hear about that. Um, <laughs> you've got some um, really, you know, Im- impressive sponsors. Uh, Edinburgh Bicycle Cooperation. Um, Nuffield Health, Provis, and Lumos. How did you go about securing or developing these partnerships? Uh, I think it's a, I think it's a difficult thing to do. Uh, I've, I've been, I've been, uh, I had been out there doing what I was doing for a while, and I had, I had, I had built up quite a, uh, I had built up quite a profile before I. Uh, and before it even approached uh, any of them, mm-hmm. but but I wrote to them and told them about myself and about uh, about m- my intention to to <coughs> to improve opportunity for disabled people to take part in sport, but it's really what I'm trying to do, and I I didn't. Um, I think a lot of people think that's a good cause to do, and uh, and so um, and some people sponsor me by giving me a lot of stuff, and 
but but others it's just a little bit here and there, but everything happens the same. And so I think getting sponsorship is a hard bit. Yeah. Uh, but I'm hoping. I, I think it's a bit of a snowball effect. Yeah. I think the more you get, the more things grow and the more contacts you make and so. Yeah. But I'm always looking for more sponsor, <laughs> sure, because unfortunately, you know, it, it, it doesn't. Um, <coughs> what what I do doesn't fund itself. You know. Yeah. And so. Uh, that's an ongoing, uh, that's another ongoing challenge. Yeah, yeah. Uh, to get money to fund it. I know the feeling. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about uh, social media. You yeah. know, you've developed a, a fairly significant following on Twitter. You're active on Instagram and Facebook. You have your website. What is your sort of strategy towards social media at the moment? I, I I put a lot of effort into my social media. I don't know if I always get it right, <laughs> you know, but, but, but when I started uh, I'm doing my website and stuff, I, I took time to learn as much as I could about social media mm -hmm. and, and I I first of all, uh, I first of all used it and just and just purely to advertise my website and try and to just try and direct traffic to my website to get people to read it to to see what I do. But but I guess I, I use it a lot more um, to market myself. I make a lot of great connections. Uh, through social media, mm -hmm. uh, I think it's a complete numbers game. Uh, the more contacts you make, the more yeah, you know, the, the more followers, the more, uh, uh, the more you get back. Uh, from it. So um, I I I I put on effort into uh, into my so my social media. And uh, because that's 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 where it all happens, you know, like a lump it, that is <laughs> that's where it's happening. Yeah. So you either you either engage it and take it on board, yeah, you know, and dive right in or just or or just ignore it completely. Cause I think there's no point in doing it half hard to do it. Yeah. 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 You know, you're wasting your time. So. <laughs> yeah, so. But, but I suppose the challenge is that in order to develop a, a profile or a brand, I mean, you kind of need to be on social media nowadays. Otherwise, you're virtually extinct. Well, <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, absolutely, you need to be on social and to develop a brand and, and, and to market yourself to, to do that and for... Uh, it absolutely sucks up your time as well. Yeah. Uh, you know, it yeah. doesn't happen itself, and and you can you can burn a lot of hours <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> as I do <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 working on my social media. But the fortunate thing is, you know, I can say hard and hard. I quite I quite enjoy doing it. Yeah. I do find it fun, right? And and there's some there's some really great things happened to me, and I've made some great contacts. Yeah. This is social, social media, so so all the people who poo poo and say, oh, you know, just it's a time waste. Well, I've had some great things happen to me uh, through social media, and I'm gonna keep doing it. <laughs> Brilliant stuff. In terms of, I think we maybe touched upon this. Um, when we spoke, it, you know, the sort of your um, automation or using any tools, do you use much or do you tend to do most of your social media um, like live, if you like? Is it all done in real time? It's mostly done on tools. Really, is it? You know, honestly, yeah. yeah. And, you know, I have, I have lots of tools that I use to control my social media and 
Uh, for example, I use I have some the 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 times my tweets for for oh, okay. setup. But apart from that, there's there's loads of other tools I use to control it. And and it's t it's taken me a long time to learn that like it does it it is like an investment of time. Yeah. So it's a because there's oodles of it out there. Yeah. Uh, on the web, but for me, it's been worth learning. Uh huh. What were some of the favourite tools that you use? Uh, I'm a big fan of Hootsuite. Are you? But that's an entertainment thing. Uh, the book I I can't even remember the name. It's like I, I, I F T T T or yes. something. Yes. Yeah. 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 I, I use that all. And uh, oh, and the lines have gone a bit blank. <laughs> That's all right, uh, no problem. <laughs> um, yeah, traveling, traveling, something that you you clearly uh, enjoy. What yeah. are what are some of the the places that you've been in in recent times? What are some of your favorite destinations? My favorite place I've been very recently. Because I've been on a cruise up the uh, up the Danube nice. River. Nice. Wow. <laughs> we 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 flew to Budapest, and we had a night there, and we joined the riverboat, and 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 we spent a week sailing from there up up the Danube. We stopped at we uh, we stopped in Vienna, in in Krems, in Passau. Uh, um, at Regensburg, and we ended up in in, in Nuremberg, and uh, it was it was a really fantastic experience. I met some great people and saw some amazing uh, <laughs> cities and sites, and I I find the whole experience is so so kind. Of so fulfilling and enriching in all mm -hmm. sorts of ways, and and uh, I would love to go back and do it all again. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Where are some of the places that you want to travel to? I think on my list is point North America and Canada, and uh, yeah. I I uh, I think one of my biggest desires is to go and ski in the Rockies or. Or wow. in, in Canada or Banff or West, uh, or West. Uh, so I would like to go and um, I would like to go and ski in North America or Canada. That's that's my, my big ambition. Yeah, that'd be brilliant. <laughs> yeah. So I just need to find a. I just need to find a. Uh, a willing funder to fund that. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Fingers crossed. A very nice sponsor. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I, I do think the work that you do is 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 so worthwhile. It's so good that you know. Um, I think the sponsors should look to, uh, I, you know, identify people like yourself that are doing great work and and help them where they can. You know, I think it's the the role of a good corporation or a good business or a good sponsor to do that. Thank you. I I I, I would hope that somebody would see would see some value and uh -huh. want them because although it's a, 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 because okay, it's fun for for me to do, it. but there's so many people just then the don't end them because they've now had the opportunity or, or they've always thought that they can't yeah. or, 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 or worse still been told that they can't. And, and, if, and if I can inspire anybody, you, you know, be, it, be it disabled or able, but anybody, just say, well, you know what, I'm going to have a go. Yeah. Is 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 all worthwhile. I and I think for I think it'd be great if a sponsor or somebody, um, as you say, would 
but recognise that as a worthwhile um, thing to do or, or cause. So yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So. Yeah, yeah. So, what does a a day in the life of you currently look like? What, what's your what's your usual usual uh, routine? Uh, well, my my usual routine is to work in the morning. I'm I'm I I think I'm functioning best in the morning. So if I have writing to, uh, to do, which I almost always have, so I do my writing and my social media in the morning, and I tend to be the afternoons um, as uh, kind of for myself to go and to go and do a sport, you know, mm -hmm. as I go to the gym uh, or go cycling or I have a I have an allotment. I don't spend a lot of my afternoons uh, on on the allotment, and then uh, if I'm busy, I'm 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 probably just social media again at night time, uh, just because uh, if I have extra, I want to do so. Mm -hmm. So so I can do my sport and fitness stuff in the afternoon, and can write at other times. Yeah stuff excellent it's been really great finding out more about you know the, the work that you're doing as I say I think that it's absolutely phenomenal um, and I do hope that you get people backing you and, and helping because it's you, you're an inspiration to others it's so important I think at this stage it'd be really good to maybe go a little bit deeper um, find out about some of your views on maybe some of the more philosophical topics and uh, yeah I'm looking sure. forward to, to hearing that. <coughs> what do you feel is your, your current purpose? What's the thing that you really sort of stand for just now? Uh, I think just by being in the world and doing what I'm doing, I just would like to support others maybe motivate them, inspire them, mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't see myself as a great, I just need to get out and do something specifically. I think just by doing what you're doing, mm -hmm. you, you know, people, and people take notice and people see what you're doing and, you know, it can change. Uh, people and uh, so I think my purpose is really just to keep on going where I am. Uh, you know, I don't see myself as having a great goal or anything. No. Well, <laughs> well, 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 I'd say there are a lot of things that I like to achieve, but, uh -huh. but, but I think my purpose is just being in the world and keep doing what I'm doing. That's a great answer. I love that. I hope. Yeah, yeah. Wh what are some of your aspirations around goals and achievements? Uh, that I would like to achieve a lot more in the outdoors mm -hmm. sport, you know. I would like to, you know, I would say there's things that I'd have to, I would have to, um, uh, I, I would love to climb more monroes, I'd like to, um, I'd, I'd, I'd like to ski a lot more. Um, so I have all the things that I would like to achieve in sport. Uh, I have a pretty strong desire to, st to study again. <laughs> but I've, 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 I've no idea where that desire comes from. <laughs> 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 because it really wasn't much fun the last day. But I still feel like doing it. And uh, I'm, I'm, I would, I'm really like to do another degree at some point. Really? So, uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's wow. one of my aspirations. What would you study? Uh, I would study theology. Okay. Yeah, that's that's my real interest in uh, 
Yeah, I'm really passionate about the theology. And really? I would love to write a book. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Amazing. What would you like your legacy to be? How would you like to be remembered? Just somebody who tried everything, <laughs> who didn't take no for an answer, who didn't, uh, uh, just somebody who would have a go at anything. And I, I, I'm, I really want to have as much fun in my life as possible. And, and I get tremendous fun and joy of doing outdoor stuff. Yeah. And, and so I think that in my life, there's somebody who did, did a lot of stuff and, 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 and enjoyed life. <laughs> enjoyed it. Yeah. Fantastic. How do you define success? <clears throat> by, by, by being happy, I think. Mm -hmm. Just by being content and happy and fulfilled. And, and, and I suppose it's a difficult thing to measure, but I think, you know, I think someone who's successful who gets up in the morning and they're, they're, they're glad to get up in the bed and think, well, you know, what, what, what fun and pleasure and enjoyment could I, could I do today and, and, and possibly who can I help? Mm -hmm. uh, I think you get an enormous um, pleasure and success and helping people, uh, and so, uh, so I think that's um, yeah. the two things I'd say. Yeah, I, I, I absolutely, I can't emphasise enough how much I like the, the helping others idea. Yeah. Is it, I, I don't know that many people have actually said that in the context of success. You know, yeah. I think that's a brilliant answer, helping, helping other people. I I think when you help other people, you help yourself. Yeah. So so in helping other people, and, and, uh, okay, you're doing it for them, mm -hmm. but actually you're do, actually you're really doing it for yourself oh. as well. Yeah. I think that's a matter of your success and how much you contribute and help other people. Uh -huh. Do you see yourself as successful? Mm. I see myself as happy yeah. and content and fulfilled and full of joy and so yeah, I would. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love it. That's great. Really, really good. Who or what inspires you? Mmm. <laughs> I, I think I try not to compare myself to people. You know, you know obviously I'm inspired when I see people uh, contributing a lot to oh. society. And I'm inspired when I see people who, who dedicate their life to public service and again to help others. So, so, so that inspires me a lot. Yeah. And, and, and I suppose when I see people uh, out doing amazing, you know, sporting things like climbing, you know, Everest or, or, or cycling the Tour de France or whatever, that, yeah, that kind of inspires me a bit. Yeah. But, <laughs> but then most of all, I'm inspired by people who, work for, for, for others mm -hmm. and for the greater good. Yeah, yeah. Are there any figures specifically, maybe people that do adventure-based work or anything like that, that that inspire you? Any Eisels? Um, 
I can't then get anybody mm. specifically. I don't. I again, you know, I really try not to compare myself to other people, and I don't want to be. I don't want to be somebody else. I, you know, I don't want to be like somebody else. Yeah. And, and you know, I'm not trying to be them. I'm. I'm really happy to just be myself. Yeah. yeah. Being the the best you. Absolutely. Yeah. I like that. I like that a lot. <laughs> What's the best piece of advice you've ever received? Hmm. Now, I was really unwell about three years ago. And I was in a really bad place. And 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 I was being with a friend on a regular basis. And my friend yeah, and and then, you know, my friend said to me one day, he said, David, just do what makes you happy. Just make yourself happy. And and I've never looked back and that's what I did. And and that's what I continue to do. Mm-hmm. I don't only I think by by making yourself happy and feel good or whatever. It's only then that you can be available and helpful to other people. Mm-hmm. So I think that's the best advice. Yeah. Uh, honestly, I think you should. I think do whatever may, uh, uh, makes you happy, not because you think it's going to lead to success or lead to money or lead to anything. It's just going to make you happy. Full stop. And and so I, I think that's the best advice I've had. Certainly, uh, in in so recent years, uh-huh. that's the one that comes most to mind. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's great advice, that. But, yeah. If you had the opportunity to speak to your twenty-year-old self, what would you say? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think it's time to get a haircut. <laughs> uh, 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 I would tell them not to worry about tomorrow. Oh, really? Because I, I, I think, you know, I was so, uh, <laughs> I was so focused on trying to get education and trying to, uh, I, I was so, and, and okay, I was still having a good time, I think, but, but I think I put a lot of effort into and uh, what would come next? Yeah, you know, if I got this education, if I got good enough to get away, yeah. I did that. And so I think it took away some of the pleasure of being 20 years old. Yeah. So I would, I would tell them not to worry about tomorrow and not to and just enjoy, to enjoy the day. Yeah. Uh, enjoy being that age and enjoy. Um, I think it was. Yeah, yeah. I suppose it's the whole idea of living in the present. Absolutely. Know, being in the moment and not continually chasing something, you know, because ultimately when you get there, it's only going to be the same case of, okay, what's next? That it means that you're never actually either living in the present or just simply being being happy. Absolutely. Yeah, and you know, I think the, the uh, as, as I said, the greatest joy is in the journey, not the arrival. Yeah. As soon as you get yeah. there, you just think, okay, what's well, next? Yeah. You know, <laughs> after the biggest joy is, is in the journey, and you have to enjoy it and get as much out of the journey itself as you can. So, uh, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> if you could change anything in the world, what would it be and why? Mm. That's a massive question. <laughs> 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 it is, you're right. That, that's not me for sex. I don't know. <laughs> uh, what would I change? Uh, I kind of wish there was more equality. And I think, you know, the the world of you know that 
the, the world become more equal for various groups, for the same people, for 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 ethnic minority, for LGBT, but there's still a million miles to go, mm -hmm. uh, in my opinion. And uh, so I would change the world and try to make it more equal in terms of employment and uh, opportunity. Yeah, I think opportunity is is not readily available for some people. I think if you live in some of the some of the sort of uh, less affluent areas, I think sadly your opportunities are are still less than 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 the people who are in the better schools and better it's just a fat to life. Yeah. And I think I would change that. Things are getting better. Uh -huh. But still a way to go. You know? Yeah. Yeah, equality's a really a really tough one. Yeah, and so I'm 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 passionate about for obvious for obvious reasons, equality's always been you know, important to me and mm -hmm. so uh, yeah. But it's a tough one, and it's getting better. There's no doubt it's getting better. Yeah. But we're not there yet. No. Absolutely not. You know, uh -huh. and people's life chances are 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 still, but you know, still very much influenced by the school they went to, where they grew up. You know, you know who they know, and and that's not fair. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, definitely. But that's why I suppose there's so much value in the work that you do and, and people who I suppose are, I don't know if spokesmen necessarily is the, the right word, but people who are speaking up for, for other groups, you know, raising awareness. It's, mm. it's just, it's such, it's such valuable work. It's so worthwhile and it's so good that you do that, you know, because you doing what you're doing can impact one other person that impacts some other person, that ripple effect. Is is just so powerful. So, yeah, I hope so. I hope that I I I hope that just doing what I'm doing, I will, you know, and some even in some tiny way, just go some way to changing, to changing things, to open up opportunities for for people and, uh, And, you know, obviously my my area is sport, and that's what's made me mm -hmm. happy and stuff. And I would really like to try and create a lot more opportunities for disabled people to do whatever sport they choose. You know, it'll be outdoor sport, you know, whatever. Uh, I hope so, just by doing what I'm doing in some small ways that I've changed things. Yeah. I genuinely think that's that's exactly what you're doing. I hope so. Yeah, David, thank you so much for for being a guest today. It's been a real honour speaking to you. It's been fascinating to hear about your your story, and I think some of your answers and some of your views are just just really brilliant. I honestly think the work you're doing is incredible, and I tip my hat to you. Well, uh, thank you very much for for inviting me. On. It's been it's been lovely to meet you, and, yeah. and uh, I'm very grateful. You're Thanks. welcome. Thank, Thank you, David. You. Cheers. Yeah. Cheers.